Hey guys, it's me, Mosh98, and I am back in my Redstone Factory world to show you some new useful circuits that you can use in your own Redstone stuff, so you can build stuff like this. But hopefully not better than me, otherwise, I don't know, you probably won't look at my stuff anymore, because it's mainly Redstone stuff. Anyway, I'll jump right into it. So I've got some of the circuits that will be useful, and some designs that feature them. Here's a Redstone signal speed change, this is my design, as you can see in the sign it says. But Basically, the idea is you pull the lever there, straight away, but when you deactivate the signal, it takes the slight delay. So how this works is obviously that when that pulls out, when it turns on, this straight away gives it power and that will give it power afterwards, but this one turns off slightly after, so that delays the pull-down effect. Obviously, you can use a knock gate, which is uh, over here, to switch that to be its fastest to turn on, or its slower to turn on, or whichever one you want. But this is not gate, I know I'm not going in order, but still, this isn't my design, this is something I saw on Seth Bling, yep. But essentially all you have to do is get a resin signal straight into a block with a torch on it, and if a block is powered with a torch on it, the torch will go off. So that deactivates the resin signal, even though the lever is pulled, so the piston is down when the lever is pulled, the lever is off, the system's up. So that's useful for, uh, usually I use it for piston doors, because you want to pull the lever and then open. There's another thing, this is a one tick pulse, another my design, but you pull the lever, or press the button or whatever, and that goes up. So you don't have to do it with the button, this, you can do it with a normal circuit where you just do this. But with this, it has to be when it turns off, it will do that. So how it works is, it's got this one here and this one going to a knock gate, but this, these ones are one tick off in the repeater, so the first one is one tick, the second one is two ticks, but it's connected up to it by a redstone. Uh, what's it called? Uh, knock it, there we are. But yeah, that's pretty simple. It only works when the signal's been on, and it turns off. I've also got another one of these, which is basically the same, but I came up with it accidentally. It's a, an extremely fast pulse, even faster than one tick, I think. But it still works, and it's pointless. There's no point in having this rather than that, except maybe if you want to fit in a direct line, it works. But as you can see, the power powers that block, which powers that resonance, which powers this. But as soon as that block is powered, that it goes up, so it stops the power going from there, so it only gives like a tiny, tiny amount of time to push the block up. And that's how it works. Very simple one there. This is a redstone clock, so the main part is here. Has to be at least two on the repeater. No, three, sorry. Has to be at least three on the repeater. So that's how at least three ticks, otherwise the torch will burn out. If the torches tick too fast, they will burn out eventually. You can make it as long as you want with more repeaters, but... This is as small as you can make it. There are probably other designs for redstone clocks, but this is the one I usually use. It's easy to just activate and deactivate by powering that block, which turns off the redstone torch, which stops the clock working. So remember that one has to be out of the torch, and it has to be connected to the line. This isn't relevant, really. That's just how you connect to something else. And this is the torch. Well, not torch, <laughs> the clock. There we are. But then that powers that, so that turns off. It has to be out of, the, out of the torch and into the block with the redstone power line leading up to that. So I've shown you this, knock gate. This is an upwards tower, so instead of having to spiral the redstone upwards in like a line with normal redstone, you can just make a direct tower that doesn't interfere with other towers next to it. So if I put another one here, it won't interfere with this one. Say I want to do it like this. This is a bit of a pointless exercise, but you know, I may as well show you that these two won't interfere even though they're opposite. Although that will affect that, but that didn't mean that, that, didn't mean that to happen. But anyway, that just, so you see how this works, that power, that doesn't power that block, so that one's on, because there's no knock gate powering that block. So that one turns on, because there's no power in that block. This one has power in the block from the one below it, so that one turns off. And this one doesn't have power in the block below it, so it stays on, so that turns on. But when you activate it like this, that one has power in it, so that turns off. And then this one doesn't have power in it, so that turns on. And this one has power in it from the one below it, so that turns off, and that makes this go down. So these are the basic circuits, and I have some of the systems you can use it for. This is one based on, well, I saw Seth Bling's video, because I'm a really big fan of him. He's the one that started me into redstone stuff, really, because I saw how cool it was. But I saw Seth Bling's uh, useless machine video, so I wanted to try and reconstruct that. I didn't follow his walkthrough, this is my own design, as you can see it's much bigger than his, because I'm nowhere near as good as him. But I aspire to be nearly as good as him one day. As you can see that pulls back and pulls the block up. I haven't used the actual piston thing because, I don't know, I just didn't really want to. I guess you use for hidden steps, so there's an area up there which you can't reach, like, 
So it's like that. You can't get up there. Then you have a hidden step, which you don't even know is there, because you just have it normally there, which makes it, you know, so we can tell that there's way up there. Although actually it's pointless. But it works. It's basically just a demonstration of how it works. So what I do here is this is the speed signal change, because you can't do two pistons, because you can't pull a piston that's already up. So it has to be different each time. It's pretty hard to explain. So in the first time, this one has to go up first, and this one, because you can't push it, if that one went up first, that would be a push piston. You can't push push pistons. And then when it pulls down, it, this one can't pull down first, because that one's already pulled up. So this one has to go first instead, and then that one goes second, instead of originally that going first and that going second. Which is why when you turn it off, it's a different order to when you turn it off, on, which is why I use that thing. Why that thing is useful. And then I have a tick, because when I put this up, then I have a tick here, which... You can't really see it because it's happening so fast. But basically that block is left there because when you pull down the piston, the piston's not pulled. It doesn't pull the block down. That one has to go first, so that one won't pull the block down, if this is making any sense. So this one has to just tick once, then pull it down. So yeah, I hope that made some sense, but that's the first one. Then I've got this other design, which is a toggle button, and then my design one. So you press the button, and then that switches this. Press the button again, and it switches it back. So essentially what happens here is one tick pulse that pulls the block away, so the signal's not going there. So the signal's not going to that one, but a knock gate makes sure that when that resonance is off, that resonance is on, so it powers that one. But when I do it the other way, if I can press the button, then that powers that line because the redstone can use a repeater to go through the block. So that line's powered, that means that block is powered so the torch is off using a knock gate system. So that one turns off, but this one's on because it's just a direct power line into that blue one. I'm still hoping this makes sense. Uh, it makes sense to me, but I've been doing this a long time, so... There's <laughs> another thing, just one last thing. This one didn't work. It looks amazing, but it didn't work. It didn't work. So, yeah. This one is, uh, you have to press these buttons at reasonably the same time, so it's like a two-person thing. If you put them further away, then you wouldn't be able to do it with one person. You have to do it with two people. So you go, ding, ding. See, it couldn't even do it then. Like that one. See that? And that pulls that down. Then do that again. And that pulls it up. So basically what happens here is this one pushes that forward. And this button activates the redstone signal. So if this one's pushed forward for a small amount of time, this one's activates the signal for a small amount of time. If they push at the same time, that'll push forward and that'll use the signal to go through that block that's pushed forward. Then that'll activate this. This is a one tick pulse which pushes that forward. Leaves that there. That redstone torch powers that block which powers this. Which turns that redstone to torch off for the knock gate and pulls that down. <clears throat> overly, uh, I don't know if it's overly complicated, but it's, it works for me. See? But if I had a block in the middle of here, I probably wouldn't be able to do it in time. So go. I mean, sorry, that's a bad, that's a bad representation of how you wouldn't be able to do it in time. But if you put this further away, then it would be hard to run from each one to the other. So it would be more of a two-person thing for a map. I don't know, some sort of adventure map maybe, or just some two-person locked door system. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this helps you in making your own redstone stuff. I actually also have one more thing. Uh, something that's pointless, but I came up with that accidentally by myself. It's what I call a non-equal redstone clock. So, normal redstone clocks go... If I show you here... Where's my redstone clock? It is... Here. I know it's going to regret that piece, but you know. Oh, yeah. So that goes out for the same... That's over. Out for certain amount of time, in for the same amount of time. So it's equal out as it is in on the timer, or on as it is off. But on this one, you don't have to have two of them. This one, it goes, stays off for longer than it's up. Stay, stays down for longer than it's up. I hope that makes sense. You obviously don't have to do it with these, and you can just do it with one, and you can use knot gates to make it up longer than it's down, instead of down longer than it's up. Than it's up. But, I'll show you, you don't have to use both of you just do it with one, if you want. But I'll show you it from above. I hope you get that, it's the clock there, and then this is just pushing that away and pulling that. And It's more of an accidental thing I came up with, there's no reason this should work. There's no reason I thought this should work, but it does. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as I said before, hope this helps you get into more redstone stuff, so you can start doing some amazing crazy inventions, and impress your friends or whoever else is on the server. Or even just make your own world that looks awesome, like mine, but maybe on survival, because I'm not great at survival, that's why I'm not doing on survival. Anyway, 
Uh, I'm rambling, so I'm going to just say bye now. Bye now.